Uh, the Fremantle Dockers have the next pick, pick number 14. And, well, it's an important stage as they build their list and continue to yep. build their list. Uh, let's see what they've done. With pick 14, the Fremantle Football Club have selected Heath Chapman from West Perth. Congratulations <laughs> to Heath as the celebrations <laughs> begin in his home there. Uh, look at everyone. Hugs galore. Well done to Heath. Kevin, an attacking defender who can really read the play. Makes things happen. Yeah, call him a rebounder. Prolific ball winner too. Averages 23 disposals a game. Pushed up like many of the boys do and played a little bit of senior footy as well. But I love his sharp, competitive edge. You've got to have that. So you've got to compete well one-on-one. -on -one. But when your chance comes, set up to run it out of defence and rebound. Uh, a bit like a Jordan Ridley. Didn't he have a breakout year at Essendon? Well, this kid uh, intercepts that way as well as provided that great run. Uh, from defence. A boy from Joondalup, uh, King Ross Footy Club. We must recognise those footy clubs that nurture them in the early years before they get into the waffle. Yeah, his skill and ability you can see as well by, by hand and foot, but you look at the, the Fremantle sort of defence already with Ryan, the rise of him this year, and he's sort of that intercept type player already. Uh, Cox as well, Hamling to possibly come back. He might need to play some one-on-one -on -one footy early, get back to intercept by just reading the play purely, not by being set up there positionally by Longmuir. So there's going to be some challenges early on, but he'll learn a lot from the likes of Ryan and Hamling and Cox, those guys that are established within the Fremantle lineup. Patience with his yeah, development. Definitely. Uh, Mick, what have you seen of him over in WA? No doubt you've had a close eye on him. Really like this guy, Sarah. Um, one out of the Colin Young, Andrew McDougall stable. So he'll be wrapped to stay at home at the Fremantle Dockers. He's just exceptional character. He's really a really, really good person and someone that will add to the fabric of your football club. I had genuine concern when I saw him a couple of years ago about his kicking action. 12 months later, he'd absolutely improved out of sight, so full credit to Heath on that. He is an intercept marking specialist, this kid. He will counter-attack, he'll rebound, uses the ball really well within his means and um, the Fremantle Dockers have already got power in that aspect in, in Luke Ryan and his ability to win the footy back. Heath Chapman's going to make a pretty handy partner over the coming years. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff, isn't it? And when you think about yeah. Fremantle fans sitting all around Australia at the moment, watching and waiting to see what, what things are going to be yep. thrown up, when you hear what Mick just said about a really talented young player, you've got to be excited. Oh, but it's, it's their team as a whole, Fremantle, and where they're starting to build. You can see that already with the, the shape of their lineup and even some of their stars having to step out of the midfield this year. All right, we've got another trade of picks here between Collingwood and the Fremantle Football Club. Fremantle moving up to pick number 27 and Collingwood giving up a pick 30 and a, a future pick in 2021. Mick Ablett, can you talk to us about the rationale behind this one and, and the decision-making process of the clubs involved uh, in trading this pick? Yeah, Sarah, it's, it's interesting. I mentioned before Frio trying to get another player on the list before the bid comes on Brandon Walker. Maybe the nerves got a bit too much for him because if that bid had have come prior to 29, it would have cost him that pick plus more. Now's their opportunity to get one through the door before that bid comes. OK, let's head to AFL headquarters where Andrew Dillon will take over for round two. With pick 27, Fremantle has selected Nathan O'Driscoll from Perth. That's what they've upgraded. Mm. Don't blame them. Love this kid, the way he plays. A left footer, first noticed at under-16 level, coming off half-back. Uh, the last game of that series, he was best on the ground. Made All-Australian that year. But then has developed as a midfielder as well. Loved his work last year, playing for Peter Sumich's under-18s again. Footy now, one touch. And athletically tested very, very well. Um, and a boy, he's a bit like a Dom Sheed. Dom Sheed uh, was a star at under 18s level two for, for WA. Absolute uh, brilliant ball winner. This kid tested athletically very well as well. Uh, and a kid from uh, the Northern Saints. Uh, again, that part of WA is a prolific producer of talented boys. So footy now is one touch. Oh, he's got the whole package, this fellow. That's why they've upgraded. Senior level footy as well, Sarah. Yes. Again, yeah. five games at, uh, at Perth as well this year, which I, that's a... I just think, personally, that's a huge advantage for, for young men who play well against their, their peers 
but then how do they go stepping stepping yes. up and we're finding that they're, they're handling those situations a lot better these days. And Mick, you had a really close eye on football in WA this year. What have you learnt in, in this particular instance? Yeah, look, Nathan's a, a great country product, a northern boy. He started out under the tutelage of Trevor Scray and Michael Pratt there in the talent program, pushed up mm. to then play under Earl Spalding and, as John I mentioned, play some senior football. Great character, Nathan. He's a really hard-working type of player. He's tough, nice on the inside. I like him off half-back. He does have speed. His speed can drop off if he spends too long a period in the midfield at the moment. Now, that'll change as he continues to progress. Love his speed off half-back early. Oh, isn't it? There's a big power pending coming here for, for Fremantle with Essendon selecting Brandon Walker, Sarah. Yes, so we can see on screen there what Fremantle gains. Obviously, Brandon and pick 60, but... Losing 53 and 118. <laughs> 118 seems a fairly long pick away. Yes. <laughs> so Brandon Walker is the flying machine. He's, a, he's a, Jason Johannesson, he's like him. And he's born in Africa too, comes from Ghana. Uh, again, in that game, the Futures game in the Australian under 17s, it was his pace in that first half that was amazing. His pace and power out of defence yep. uh, separated him from many, many others. Um, Again, a boy that um, uh, is just evolving through the Colts competition, the under competition in the West. Uh, Mick might have a comment on him, the boy from East Fremantle, but geez, I loved what I saw of him last year. Yeah, With pith, pick 50, Fremantle have matched Essendon's bid for Brandon Walker from East Fremantle. There you go. Mick, what do you think of this one? It's a goodie. Yeah, it certainly is. It's really surprising. I would have expected his name to be called out a lot earlier in the draft. I'm not surprised to see Essendon put a bid in on him, especially considering they lost uh, Adam Sard and Connor McKenna because he's a ready-made mm. replacement. Does need to work on his defensive game a little bit because he is all out attack at the <laughs> moment. But when you talk athletically what the attributes are required to play AFL football. He's got it in spades. And when he does take the ball and go, which he showed during the, uh, the, the Colts' final series, particularly over there in Western Australia, was that the other players can't get a hand on him. So Freeman will be absolutely stoked. I think they've had a fantastic night. And to bring a player of his calibre through this late in the draft, they'd be very, very happy with, because I saw him as a potential late first-round pick at worst, a second-round pick. So, great to see Brandon Walker make his way onto Fremantle's list. With pick 53, Fremantle have passed. So, the Dockers are done for the night, content with what they've been able yep. to uh, bring in the doors. So, uh, a job well done for the Dockers tonight. They'd be very happy. They, they sort of shifted some picks as well throughout... Uh, Throughout this uh, throughout this period, so yeah, they've they've done well again. Fremantle, they've got great young talent already on their list. You look at the the growth of their their players this year with Brayshaw and 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 Chera too, that really did stand up throughout uh, throughout this year. And it even pushed, I suppose, their midfield dynamic where Walters has spent more time forward and Nat Five at times pushed forward, which helped, I think, their, their line-up and, um, and gave them a different look through, through the midfield in particular. So Fremantle are in a really, really rapid growth phase at the moment. They could, they could challenge quite effectively next year um, in, the, in the competition. So, you know, that, that, and that, what I loved about the fact of Brayshaw and Cherry this year, Sarah, was that they were challenged earlier in the year. That was like, where are these guys really at? It was like the two of them just sort of grabbed each other and said, well, we've got to do something about this. So they were challenged in the media and they stood up on the back of it and had unbelievable seasons. So Fremantle passed on their last pick, yet stay in the draft for, the reason, for this reason right here. We saw Joel in the trick shot yes, package we did earlier we did. in That the was night. my favourite. So plenty of talent. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. That was the one over the roof, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Well, Billy Brownlaw started it all those years ago, didn't he, with the kick over the silo? That was the that was the start of <laughs> that was the start of it all. But see what Frio do here. Their pick is in. Haven't taken long. With pick 54, Fremantle have matched the Western Bulldogs' bid for Joel Weston from Claremont. Yeah, no, no surprises there from the Fremantle recruiting group. I think Weston's uh, an elite talent. He's a, 
A young man that's got absolute elite speed. He's only small of stature, but when he gets the footy out wide, he goes. And uh, very, very difficult for opposition teams to get a hand on him. So that's a no-brainer for Fremantle. They've added some outside class. A young man that's from Western Australia, so they're backing in the local talent. And I think it's a really good selection. Another one out of the, that Colin Young stable that's been uh, spoken about really, really highly over in the West and developed really nicely over the course of the year. So to get, a, again, a player of that talent um, and that elite nature athletically, he's got good ball handling skills, nice and clean at ground level. So to get him through late in the draft, I think caps off a really good night for the Fremantle Dockers.